Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is a, a video on tips and techniques of how to use the Orion XT8 Classic Dobsonian Telescope. There's really not much to it. it. This is a very simple telescope to use. It just pivots up and down, left and right. You just move it around by hand as you follow objects. So there's no polar lining necessary, uh, nothing really difficult at all. It's about the easiest type of telescope to use. But there are a few key things to know before you um, get there. So let's go through some of those things and, uh, and uh, learn a little bit more about it. The first thing you're going to want to do is align the finder scope. When you first put this on uh, from the assembly instructions in the manual, it's on there but it's not pointing at the same thing that the telescope is. There, One's pointing this way, one's pointing a little bit off, so it's not calibrated. And if you try to find something in the night sky with an uncalibrated finder scope, it's an exercise in frustration. So definitely align the finder scope first. The way you do that is to find something the hard way. You've got to find something with the eyepiece here uh, without the use of the finder. So I like to do it during the day. Uh, point the telescope off at a tree or a power pole or some, some well-known object out there that you can tell exactly where you're pointing. Uh, it's not moving. It's bright. You can see it during the day. So it, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going to pretend here. I'm going to aim the telescope off at the corner of a building. Get it centered, the, the object that you want to center in the eyepiece here. And then look through the finder scope here. And you'll see the red dot, but it won't be on the object. It'll be off to the side. On the finder scope itself are two screws, an up and down and a left and right. And they adjust the dot so it's moving through the view. You want to overlap the dot here with what you see here. So as I'm looking, I see the, the dot off center. I'll just adjust it here, turning it this way, turning it this way, until it's looking at the same thing I'm seeing here. You might have to go back and forth a couple times in case you bump the telescope and you move it off center. Uh, but pretty quick you'll get this aligned so now you can use it to find objects in the night sky. Now the telescope collects the light, but it's the eyepiece itself that does the magnifying. The classic comes with a 25 millimeter eyepiece. That's about 40 something power in this telescope. So it's a great eyepiece for locating anything in the sky. Uh, if you're looking at a large uh, nebula like the Orion Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy, that's perfect. You don't need a lot of power for those things. You just need a l really wide field of view and low power. So that's the ideal eyepiece for looking at some of those big things. If you're looking at a planet, you can center it with this. Um, and let's say you're looking at Jupiter. You can see the four moons around Jupiter with this eyepiece. But if you really want to zoom in and see more planetary detail, I would suggest adding on a higher power eyepiece or a Barlow lens. A Barlow is a doubler. It'll double whatever eyepiece you stick into it. So let's say you found Jupiter with this eyepiece. Pull it out. Put the Barlow in. Put the eyepiece back into it and lock everything down. And then just refocus. And now you've got twice the magnification. So a Barlow or some other higher power eyepiece is great for really zooming in and seeing planetary detail. Also, if you're looking at the moon with a telescope this large, that sucks in a lot of light, so it'll be like going outside on a bright sunny day without sunglasses. You can do it, it's not going to damage your eye, but it's pretty uncomfortable. So we have a moon filter that can be threaded onto the bottom of the eyepiece here. And then when you look at the moon, it cuts down on the extra brightness, on the glare, and gives you more contrast and just a better, more pleasing image. So I definitely would recommend, if you like to look at the moon, um, adding on a moon filter and a Barlow or some other higher power eyepiece. With a Dobsonian like this, it's best to be sitting down um, and comfortable. You, you can stand up and bend over to look through the eyepiece, but I mean, I'm kneeling down here, so that's the perfect height for a small little stool or chair. Uh, a drum stool is perfect. Uh, you're right in the right um, height to be viewing through the telescope. So let's just pretend I'm going to be looking at something. It's a very simple process. Let's say Jupiter's right over here. So I'll use the finder scope that I've previously aligned, get it right on the object there, and then look through the finder, uh, the, the eyepiece here and focus, and there's my object. So now I can either stick with that eyepiece or swap for higher magnification or lower power. But as you can see, the motions are very simple. I'm just moving it up, down, left and right. Uh, you'll find that even at really high power, it's easy to nudge this thing in very small increments. So you can follow the planet as it moves through the sky and get a very pleasing image. All right, well, there you have it, the Orion X-T8 Classic Dobsonian Telescope. Thank you very much. Clear skies.